Hey everybody, it's March 19th and I hope that you're all having a good day. You're here at the weekly chaos community call. Um, just a reminder, this is under our chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us. We have a small group today, um, which is great. I mean, that's totally fine. That means we'll just probably bust through this agenda super quick. I will, I can figure out how to do this. It's been one of those days. There we go. Okay. Um, please add your name if you would like and tell us how your day is going in an emoji. Ooh, Vinod has a big old smiley face. <laughs> Having a very good day. <laughs> All days are good. <laughs> That's the spirit, Vinod. <laughs> <laughs> right? I love it. I love it. Sophia, I'm with you. Why don't we have a dumpster fire. I wonder if that too. Why isn't that? That seems so it, obvious. It exists in other tools that I actually went into chat, created it, and then tried to paste it in, and then it just came through as the little colon dumpster fire. <laughs> oh, I think you, you tried to get it from Slack? Uh, Slack or like chat, any of them. Yeah. Because they, they exist in other tools. I feel like it should it should be a universal emoji because it's definitely needed sometimes. Mine has been uh, putting out fires pretty much today. So that's why I have a little fire extinguisher. Any day that starts at like the Apple store is not yeah. going to go real well. No <laughs> kidding. Yay, Sean figured it out. There we go. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's jump into it. Um, I was just going to give a quick wrap up um, from scale. I don't know mm -hmm. if Don is not here now. Okay. Uh, so scale was great. It was this past weekend. It's a um, conference out in Pasadena, California, and we had a booth there. Um, quick side note, they were setting up, and I think this happens every year, I I've been told, but they were setting up for America's Got Talent next door. So there were um, an interesting mix of people walking around. Yeah. <laughs> So that was kind of interesting. And um, some of the people were going to go, like you can get free tickets, I guess, to watch the show. So the, some people were going over there as like a social event. <laughs> Why not, right? right? It's right there. <laughs> it's free. So yeah, um, I did not do that. But yes, people did. I'll keep that in mind for next year, I guess. Um, but we had about 86 people in our raffle, which is great. Um, most people that we talked to had not heard of chaos. So that was awesome. We got to introduce ourselves to quite a lot of people. Um, and then we had a bunch of newcomers join the Slack over the weekend. So if you see somebody new, just say hello. And I don't think we have anybody new on the call today. No, we don't. Okay. So yeah, and there were a few people who were like, oh, I joined your Slack, but I've never said anything. I don't know, oh, like, I don't know anybody. So they might come out of the woodwork and <laughs> you might see them around now. Um, I did also add a few people into different channels. So you, <laughs> you might see faces being dropped into different channels based on their, their interests. Um, yeah. Do we have any, is there any questions about this? Was that, do you have a sense, was the 86 people more or less than um, all things open? A little bit less, but not that much less. Okay. Um, yeah, it was pretty busy. There were, I would say there were, were more students there. Um, because all things open? No, at um, scale. Oh, interesting. They do okay. uh, this really cool thing. And I, I'm fairly certain those student tickets were free. But if you buy, I love this family friendliness. I did want to give them a shout out here. If you buy a ticket, a regular ticket, you get a companion ticket for 18 and under free with your ticket. Okay. So I think that's just, that was really awesome. So there were uh, quite a lot of students. And then I think Saturday, they were hosting like bigger groups of students. So from like local colleges, local high schools. Okay, um, which was really interesting and, and it was really great to talk to some of those folks so we might see some new pitch because they were a lot of them were looking to contribute somewhere but they didn't know where to start so okay. i was like come to chaos we will help you i mean that would make sense if there were a lot of students why many hadn't heard of chaos they yeah could... yeah but even like the project maintainers um there were quite a few who had not heard of chaos okay. too so that was really good um Sophia put something in the chat too, just like the differences of folks in yeah. backgrounds, projects, companies. I th yes, I think um, so. Scale is a little more hardcore Linux side because it's Southern California Linux some Expo, I think is what Scale stands for. Um, so it's a lot of like uh, a lot of Linux distros, a lot more like um, like EFF. 
um, you know, a little bit more, <clears throat> I don't want to say hardcore open source, but maybe old infrastructure. Source. It's infrastructure centric. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was really, really interesting. It was a different, um, a different vibe than all things open, which is a little more corporate, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's a big conference. It's, a, it's it? big. okay. Um, was it like, I mean, I'm sure you'll say yes, but like, was it worth it? Like, it's a lot of effort to go out there. It is. Yeah. Um, I, I would say, yeah, I would say, yeah, just because we did meet so many different people. Um, and then the people who had heard of us had only heard of us and didn't really know what we do. Okay. So, um, so that was interesting too. Like they'd heard the name, but just weren't, weren't sure like what we did. And so that was really, really good. Okay. I think it, yeah. And the booth was free, so we didn't, we didn't have to pay for it. It's just our travel out there. Um, yeah. And okay. yeah, so like, because Don was giving a talk already. Um, mm -hmm. Ray was out there also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think if we send like, if, if, I, if I'm not the person who goes, but if we send somebody that isn't giving a talk, um, I think we would just maybe need one person to kind of staff the booth. Okay, okay. So, so that's your hand up. Quick question, yeah, thank you. Um, Stella here. Just wondering, do we have any kind of like guidelines or anything around which type of conferences are the best for us to participate in? Not not hard hard and fast rules. Um, so this is what our fourth third third conference with a booth. I think is that right? Well, no. all things open. This and, and what else? Aussie. I think that was it. Okay. Yeah, so Stella, that's a great question. I think we're still trying to figure that out. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think we have any particular goals or um, like strategies or anything like that. I think it's, uh, you know, kind of the, the events where we were gonna be anyway, like we'll have one at OSSNA as well. Um, so I think as long as it's like open source and has something to do with, you know, either contributors or maintainers, I think, or anybody interested in metrics, I would think might be worth a conversation anyway. Okay. Oh well, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. We did learn, uh, Don and I discovered that we don't have anything in the booth that actually says what we do. <laughs> so, yeah. Which was That's funny. several times. <laughs> and it had that is something. <laughs> I don't think anybody had ever really said that before, which was kind of funny since this is our third one and nobody really noticed. Um, yeah, so we, we need some flyers or something. Uh, maybe we can get a, our sign redone. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm we can think like, that. like bookmarks, like just that, you know, something really simple. Yeah, yeah. 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 We can done that um, thing for the DEI audit member. It was just, yeah. just like, mm -hmm. a, like something like that. I think. Yeah, I think that would be really great. I was also asking about this just because for example, I know that there are many like events in Latin America. We don't have that many hardcore like maintainers or code developer um, conferences that usually are like in the US or Europe or, and so on. Um, but <clears throat> also because that's why I asked in our group on the regional leads group about what are the like the most emblematic projects that we could showcase because in Latin America I feel like we could make a lot of use about like the badging events or badging projects because it's not something that hardcore like as like Sean said infrastructure or technical and it's more around like community so I was thinking also like if we had some sort of like guidelines so if we go to like more like open data digital right defenders organizations here in Latin America what is the best project that we should showcase there for example you know yeah I think that's that's great I think um, that would be a, a pretty good fit there to showcase the badging especially yeah, I think a lot of like conferences and like folks have been having a lot of conversations around how to make their events more inclusive and so on. And I think like the badge and it's a really nice, like our badging project is a really nice like excuse to get people to start, to, like just to help people start having that kind of conversations. 
Yeah, agreed. So I just put in the notes, I'll make a couple of things kind of like based on the thing we had done for the DEI audit. Okay. And I thought maybe one could be just like about us, you know, that we could just hand out. And yep. then so to your point, maybe we could have a couple, one that would be here, are some key projects around community work, and here are some key projects around technical work. So just two different handouts. Yeah, I think that would be super great. Okay. I think it would be like broader to like try to get more audiences or like more people that are not necessarily as technical as others. Yeah, I think that's great. I'll put those together. And then I thought too, like when I was at All Things Open, you know, we, you just spend so much time repeating like what? And now Elizabeth, if we do the booth, we could, if somebody's like, what do you do? We can just like point to a flyer. Here you go. Like, <laughs> this is technical or community. We're just like here. <laughs> yeah, I think Don, Don is, talk less. Yeah, I think she was super tired of just hearing me repeat over and over and over the same. Here, just take this. Go read this at your own leisure. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll put together a couple for next week. Sounds awesome. fun. Yeah, awesome. Do you think we can get that out by uh, OSSNA? Do you think? Oh, sure. I, I'm just going to, honestly, I'm just going to take the one that we did for the audit from the audit team and mm -hmm. just rework some of the text. I think the structure of it is pretty nice. Yeah. And it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Let me know, Matt, one, once you've like edited it so I can yeah. translate it again to Spanish. Perfect. I'll, I'll just bring them forward next week if you'll be here. And if not, I'll just put them in like after the community call, just put them in the general channel or something like that. Yay. Okay, cool. Any other boothy ish kind of things? Okay. We can move on then, I guess. Was the weather nice? It was gorgeous. It was like sunny 70s. <laughs> yeah, I came home and it was snowing yesterday. It's like 30 degrees here. <laughs> Not happy about that. <laughs> But of course you don't see much, you know, like when you're just in the hotel and the conference. Yeah, yeah. But the walk in between was awesome. So. <laughs> um, okay, let's go on to the next one. I, this is just a reminder that we do have a couple of new Badger orientation sessions coming up. So if you are interested in becoming a Badger or you wanna refresh, uh, if it's been a while, then you can just uh, sign up for either of those. And actually, I mean, you don't officially need to sign up for anything. You can just show up. Um, but here are the meeting invite, whatever, res reservation. I don't even know what you would call that. But here you go. You just click on these and then you can sign up for yourself. Calendar Maybe. invites? Yeah, calendar invites. Invites, <laughs> I guess, sure. Because you're inviting yourself, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> um, any questions? Many places. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just love this course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. In case you all don't know, my eyes also infected, but like that's just how the day's been. Today. So yeah, I'm ready to go back and do a redo. <laughs> that's okay. Did you want to talk at all about like? We had the, it sounds like, it sounds like every time you always say we're fine on Badgers, um, but like just coverage about what, maybe when you're out of town, cause. Yes, yes. You want so, to be able to bring that up, yeah. Yeah, um, so I have not reached out to her yet, but I'm going to reach out to Edienka to see if Edienka wants to be my backup for okay. um, scheduling those. Um, since she's already super involved with the badgers okay. um, and the badging bots, so I don't think she's here today. Is she, I, I don't want to totally put her on the spot, but okay. Yeah, so basically, go ahead, Sella. Sorry, um, when we say badgers, what do we mean by badgers? Yeah, that's a great question. So, for our uh, event badging, we have um, two people that manually review those applications that come in. And they just verify that like what the event organizers told us in their application is true. Like the, they just check the links and make sure. And then if there's questions, like something's not clear, 
then they would reach back out to the event organizers and just get clarification. So it's all done on GitHub um, transparently and we call them badgers. Like oh, okay. Okay, I get it. Do we have any kind of like also like a set of guidelines to how you become a badger? And if and is being a badger also like showcased in any of like in any side or part of our website for people to know like that's a, another way in which you can contribute to? It's a great question. I actually don't know. Um, we moved some docs around, so I'm not actually sure if oh, that shows up. Know. Yeah. It might just be in the badging repo is where it might exist in the badging like wiki docs that they do that they put together um the badging team so yeah we just um there is a badging channel and we just kind of mention it periodically Sela, whenever we um just have somebody express interest or ask or if we feel like we're running low on the number of people who are available to do it so the um the only criteria is just to come to this orientation and after this orientation you'll be ready to be a badger uh, all the links and resources that the badgers will get in orientation are all pinned in the badging channel. So there's like, it says new badgers, click here. And there's all the stuff that you'll, we'll go through. Um, and then there's the badging by chaos to link to the repo. Okay. Okay. I think that's something that like people that are more community oriented would be really interested in participating in. Yeah, and it's a really easy way to contribute because you don't really need deep knowledge of chaos. You don't need deep knowledge of the metrics. Um, you're really just verifying kind of what the event organizers are telling us. So it yeah. is a super easy way to contribute. Yep. Yeah, I think it's like a really great, like, um, like re a, a really easy and like a really open door for people to just join and start doing the work. Agreed. Yeah, we push it in the newcomers channel as well, but it's all kind of unofficial. It's not, you know. It does make me think we should have like on um, the link I'm putting in the chat. Yeah. Like maybe if you just click on that, I don't know if it, it is more put in the chat. <clears throat> it works oh, for me. Something oh. there to say like become a badger. Yeah. So oh, the. The Slack channel piece doesn't work super well, but can you, can you Elizabeth, just go to the chat? In... Like the badging.chaos.community. Yeah. Yes. This... So that, like, where it says, yeah. like, how to apply, how it works, maybe we could put one below that, like, become yeah. a badger or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be great. I love that. I would love that okay. to put that in there. Add your up. <laughs> <laughs> we'd like to point out that i think georg and i are wearing the same hoodie today i see it now i see it <laughs> oh, I, I, missed one line. I did not wear mine today or i would have matched y'all yeah i'm dressed in my wife's outerwear today so this is the shirt from her family reunion two summers ago her family's so big they make swag wow that is an event. Jeez. That is an event. <laughs> we match <batch> them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't honestly I'm not sure they'd qualify entirely. <laughs> we'd have to car we'd have to a carve out on the members of that certification. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. This is great. And just so people know to the earlier comment about finding help for Elizabeth on it is there's a period of time during several times during the year where a bunch of applications come in spikes hard like, like lot and if elizabeth is and they require manual engagement like there are things that somebody has to do to kind of get them through the workflow and when elizabeth is traveling like normally elizabeth like she takes care of all, all of that workflow uh, but traveling makes it a little bit trickier. And so just having somebody else who could help in times of need. Yeah, um, essentially it's uh, assigning the badgers. Um, that's all a manual process. So we have a spreadsheet and I just look through to see who hasn't done one in a while, who's up yeah. up next kind of thing. Um, it's a little, a little more than that, but yeah. Uh, so 
So it's that. And then um, even having somebody else to be able to, I think Ruth can also run the actual badge, but Ruth is also traveling a lot and super busy too. So um, yeah, just having another person, I think will be great for that. Okay, anything else with badging? All good. Awesome. So Sela, yeah, if you are interested in doing badging or just want to know, Christy does it. So if you want to join that. Um, I do. Yeah, if you can't make either of these, just let me know. And that goes for everybody, actually. If you can't make either of those, let me know and we'll just do a another one, one-on-one -on -one or whatever, however we want to do it. Thank you. Also, I was wondering, just one, sorry, one last question. I know I am, sorry. You're good. Are all like, for example, I'm pushing for Wikimania and pushing for the FOS4G to apply for, a, for one of our badge, badges, right? Awesome. Is that something we can do? Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like a hardcore open source. I mean, open knowledge, I think it's also part of this. I think plus for G, of course, it's open source, but for geomatics, I mean, is this also like, is it okay? It's my question. I think so. Um, I mean, it's generally related. And I believe we've done a, we did an open data day or something like that. Um, and for the UK, at the very beginning, but yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, I don't know what others, if others have strong opinions against that, but I think it's great. Like the more, the more, the better, as far as I'm concerned, if it's in the tech space. Yeah, then... I agree. And you have something that you can point to for the DEI.MD file. I think she's talking about events, but yeah. Oh, events. Yeah, event. Specifically oh, events right now. I'm starting, I'm starting small. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, cool. Anything else? Okay, let's go on. So uh, if you're, if anybody was following the general channel, <laughs> then you will have seen that there was an issue with the um, new calendar not loading uh, when your internet is not great or not working very well. So um, for some reason, I don't know what happened. The old calendar it unfortunately was broken and I don't know why, like I did not mean to do that. So it's not like I made everybody move over to the new stuff already. I just didn't, I don't know what I did. I did something wrong. So. I, it's, it's, it behaved pretty weird. It was not deterministic. I'm not sure you did anything. I think it might just be a, I think it's a byproduct of the way the tools talk to each other and something went awry there. Cause it could be, could be. Yeah. But hopefully we have it all ironed out. Um, so we we do have the old calendar still. There's a, um, it's just like chaos calendar dash three. So if you need to access the old, let's see if it works. This will be the test. It does, yay. <laughs> you wanna access the old calendar, you can. You will just need to resubscribe because this is a new link now. I had to kind of rebuild it a little. So, um, so that's still there and it is, linked uh from the old calendar or from the new calendar as well thank you for doing this elizabeth i know it's been a giant pita it should have been anyway it should have been right here i don't know why it's not i think it why is, is it me? i think if you scroll down i see it yeah that's, uh, that's right isn't it it is the new one but i linked to the old one just and i don't know why it didn't thing. update what's that oh i was just repeating what you were saying to sean Oh, um, you know what? We, it, it may just be a question of clearing the cache on our WordPress instance, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's probably it. May it. be caching this page. Yeah. So, okay. like, if we if we come back in ten minutes, it might it might be there. <laughs> it might magically be there. We, who knows? Because that makes us feel better. <laughs> so yeah, so there will be a link to the old one if for some reason you can't access this. And just a reminder: when you do subscribe to these, there is a lag between. Um, this calendar and what the very first time when you when you um, import it and I think what if any changes are made there is a little bit of a lag so if you don't see something right away that's probably why um, but I did want to let that everybody know that that's still there so and I wanted to see if anybody had any questions I appreciate everyone's patience I know this is kind of a mess so I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't meant to be what it is Oh, my bad. Yeah, and thank you for getting that all set up. The
calendar does propagate properly any changes to the Google Calendar that I'm importing. Okay. Into. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so if you do have other problems, just let me know and we'll figure it out. It's not a problem at all. I'm happy to figure that out because that's probably something that I broke anyway. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and uh, sorry, one more thing. We will continue to double do the double calendar. So um, if there is, or if there are problems, we'll, we'll just continue the double calendar for a little while until we're all kind of feel comfortable with the new system. Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda is I just want to announce that we have some co-chairs for our project management operational working group. That's now more official. Um, so Visaya, Visaya Yiga and Peculiar, yay. Thank you all for expressing interest and for stepping up. So um, they will be taking that uh, group and, and kind of running with it. And then um, also Mary Blessing, um, and then I'm going to help co-chair that uh, community management operational working group as well. So thank you, Mary Blessing, for um, jumping up there and, and volunteering for that role as well. So yay. any questions on either of those? Do we want to use some of this time, the community meeting, to like provide uh, people an opportunity to give feedback or like um, report back is what I meant to say. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think that would be great um, for not just these groups, but for any of the context working groups, any of the regional chapters. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot going on. So I don't know how we want to do it. If we want to like just say, hey, if you have an update, just put it on the agenda, or if we want yeah. to work about maybe. space every time, like I'm not sure how we want to, how efficient yeah. we want to make it. Maybe start by just saying if you have an update and just encouraging folks to give updates. Yeah. It, it's so simple. It's just like what you did. <laughs> well, yeah, like what's going on? Yeah, so we know mm -hmm. we can just all be part of it and celebrate mm -hmm. with you. Yep. Yeah, let's just put that in here. Maybe just like an add your own agenda item or yeah. add your own like working group updates. I put an exclamation point because we're really serious about that. That, that is serious. <laughs> I use them a lot though. So maybe I've diluted there. <laughs> Where every sentence is in, in an email. Yeah. If you really want to do it, you do two now because you've <laughs> You've overused just one. <laughs> That's right. I see that you did that in the chat, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, anything else with this? All good. Awesome. Okay. Open source day for uh, Grace Hopper. Sean or Georg, you want to talk about that? Georg, you want to talk about it? Sure, happy to. So we were invited on Slack to submit a session to the open source day. It's a wholly virtual event. And we brainstormed some ideas on what we could be doing there. And then yesterday, Paula invited us. And so Sean and I showed up um, to draft a session proposal. What we are thinking is to have a chaos Zoom um, channel for the day and then throughout the day to have different activities. And then we would create breakout rooms for those um, or we stay in the main room if however we see fit. And we have four activities that are currently in the proposal. One was um, from Elizabeth uh, talking about how we are working in chaos to welcome many diverse contributors and their many diverse contributions and sharing what we do in chaos. One was from me about squashing DEI bugs in open source communities, which is a talk I've given at other conferences before. Um, it's all about creating welcoming inclusive communities. 
then two activities, one for Augur and Aetnot, and one for Grimoire Lab. And we have that proposal pretty much ready to go, and Sean volunteered to submit that. And the deadline is later this week, and then we can figure out the details on what we want to do within those activities, which the conference is in October, I think. Yep, October 4th is open source day. That's a Friday. And <clears throat> Elizabeth, the only thing I need to submit it is I just need a couple, a little bit of your personal profile info. So. Um, okay, so. No rush. No, uh, I'm confused because I thought Paula was gonna have me submit that i thought paul and i were meeting oh you can oh then then you and paula submit it that works for me okay <laughs> we just yeah. here when Georg and i were on the call we just didn't want to dump it on you and say I, like I, congratulations <laughs> i appreciate that very much um no um so i connected with paula on slack and i think she and i are gonna submit it together like she's gonna walk through it with me so perfect um, yeah i'll take Thank a look at that. doing that um so you need my profile information and then how if much you're filling out if you're filling out with paula you could just do that while you're there that's okay. what we did okay and then how much detail do we have to put in that um proposal do we have to have like it all or is this enough i guess i well? left i left the meeting yesterday with the impression that we had enough okay that we had fleshed out enough of the details that were required at this point okay sweet and that is all virtual. So mm -hmm. I just day virtual. I also created a Slack channel for it this morning a little early, but people started volunteering. So I wanted to have a place to communicate about it when it happens. Yeah, I think that's great. Without having to remember a list of people. Yeah, it's always hard in Slack to do that when you have a group of <laughs> a DM group. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Does anybody have questions on this? Thanks for doing it. It's a community effort. Okay, well, let's go ahead. We and do, Sophia. What is what Just is ping us in Slack. Oh, oh, I'll join yeah. you right now. This is also um, one more opportunity for anyone who has ideas for activities to run during the open source day, we can still add it to the proposal. So if anyone has ideas, please speak up now or ping us on Slack. I know, that, I know that a lot of us are, I mean, a lot of you are going to be participating and I know not all of us are going to be there, but do you think that in whichever part of the presentation that you might give that day, would you be able to talk about like the regional work that we've been doing? I think so. And just I mean, like I to think it's wide hold. open. That'd be a, that'd be amazing. Yeah, Elizabeth, when you put together the, I guess, can you just add that to what we have in there when yeah. you and Paula get together? I think that would be great. Yep, for sure. That's a great fit. Okay, awesome. So if you have any other ideas specific, like, I don't know what that would be, but if you do, just let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know. Thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Okay, let's move on. We got about 11 minutes left. Um, hey, uh, Georg, do you want to talk about this? We we did something that we talked about and we actually did it. So yay, go us. Well, I did not do it. You did it. <laughs> I mean, kudos goes to Santi who is unfortunately out sick today. And so if you go there, I don't know if it links to the correct document. So we have the first the doctor's md file in the chaos project the idea is that we <coughs> allow users of the chaos tools and metrics to describe their how they're using it and we can keep track of it because it doesn't show up in our other metrics and we can start building up um more of like here's how chaos is being used everywhere and how important we are. And when we then report to the Linux Foundation, 
we can say, oh, look at all these different use cases that we have already documented. So this is the first start. And as Petruja, we of course are using Grimoire Lab, so we added ourselves. And now that this is in place, and we all have a look at it, I'm happy to make any changes based on feedback, what you all think. And then we can approach my, or our ideas, we can approach our customers because they're using Grimoire Lab indirectly. Um, and then we can also reach out to community members we know that are using Grimoire Lab without hiring Betergia. So that's how we're planning to get this list filled. I will say that was a question I got uh, several times as to who is using chaos and how are they using it. So this will be perfect for the next time that I have to answer that question. I can just say, hey, go look at this doc and you will be able to see. Um, so I did have a question about this. I'm, I'm guessing then we would want one in Augur and then like one in community for all, like all of chaos metrics, or do we want them in like the different, uh, like working groups or how do we, how do we want to do that for the rest of chaos? I might leave it to software for now and let Grimoire Lab pilot this before I rolled it out everywhere, but only because it feels like uh, another thing to direct people to. <clears throat> Go ahead, Benad. Sorry. Uh, so is it more for the, like, uh like more of a practical side, like I'm thinking of, I've seen chaos being used in academic research also, where they have taken the metrics, they have adopted it. Will that be counted over here in the adoption side or it's just more, okay, this particular company has used the metric or they've used it in this certain way or in model uh, or that is the only part of it. So I'm trying to have those clarity. My thought is it's more companies who are using it, but Gaylord could speak to that a little bit for organizations, particularly on the software side. Yeah, I in the research side, if there's a research team that is using Augur or Grimoire Lab, I think it would be great to add that to the list as well. Or maybe there's a second list for here are research papers that have been created with the software. That would be fantastic, actually. So why I ask this, like yesterday I was reading a MISQ paper in which they have used project velocity as a metric and adopted it in their research. I was like, wow, that's a big impact factor for our project. And we should like have some place to show across that thing. So I was not sure like, Will that be over here or someplace? I'm not sure. And out of curiosity, we know, because we did not invent the metric, we documented it and standardized it. Did they mention chaos as a source? Yes, it was in their reference as a source. Wow, like, that's yes. awesome. It's a, it's a recent 2024 publication. It's like just out there. I just got an email day before yesterday. I was reviewing it a little bit. So. I feel like that would be helpful to just keep somewhere, <laughs> keep a list somewhere. Um, I don't know where that would be, but I think that that's it's really great. And the fact that we kn we know it's being used, we might as well document that somewhere. I think it does, it does beg the question a little bit, like, do we do the list on people's behalf or do we have them do it? Gary had kind of mentioned reaching out to people they know that are using the tools. So for example, like on the list that Georg that you showed, like we could just add compass, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we know, but like, should we? Uh, and then Vinod, same for you. Like, there's a paper, it's published, we know it. So, right, so ask first, I see. 
Um, and that's fine process wise. It'll just, it'll take longer. But what about like, what do you think about like published papers? I mean, they are published. <laughs> it's pretty easy for us to, it's like a reference. Yeah. And I see it like a media mention almost, you know, we keep track of those when we see us mentioned in media articles. So for me, like the research paper that's already been published and is out there is similar. Yeah. A little different, obviously, but similar. So back in some time on the website, we had a page link where uh, we had a, this link. Okay, Kios mentioned. It was mentioned in this article or in this paper. We curated that list at some point in time, but I don't know whether it's again there or not. I have to dig that again. So I remember Georg started that page. I uh, added a few more links when I was coming across and then I don't know, uh, we have to, maybe we can use that as a history and continue to that page. Yeah, I, I remember I was mm, keeping track of media mentions, blog posts, news articles, every time chaos was mentioned. I don't know what happened to that during the website redesign and I have not been updating that list for the last year or two so last year i added uh, one or two things i have to find out where that link is but it, it is there somewhere in that uh, repo i was just curious if it would come up but it looks like there might be stuff to look through so yeah i don't know but I know exactly what you're talking about too. I remember that doc. I just don't know what happened to it. So is there any action item? Do we wanna start one for that or? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out the, the like the, the um, citation stuff. See if I can't figure something out to do there. I don't know. to explore further. There we go. Okay, great. One of the ideas is, and some software does this where they have one central paper and they ask academics to use that paper when they use the software and has a digital object yep. identifier, DOI, and then we can track how many times it's been referenced through the knowledge graph or Google Scholar. And maybe we need something like that for chaos. We created the same thing through GitHub uh, citation option, but then it was, again, the struggle within a separate repo or for the entire chaos, and then we, uh, didn't follow that again. Well, let's keep thinking about it. We have we have two minutes and we have two more things. <laughs> so we'll keep thinking about that. We'll bring that back up next time. Uh, okay, so this one is a follow-up for the onboard course volunteers. I'm thinking that maybe was peculiar that put that on here. I see her in the dock, but I don't hear her. Okay, Georg, do you want to do a quick uh, update of the Code of Conduct Committee while we're trying to connect with Peculiar in the meantime? Anita is the lead of the Code of Conduct Committee. So if Anita wants to give an update, Yes, I didn't see her. Sorry, Anita. <laughs> I didn't see you on the call. It's fine. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so um, quick update. We've had a couple of meetings so far from the Code of Conduct team. And we also like started taking the courses from a Code of Conduct, Code of Conduct training by Sage Sharp. So um, in our last meeting, we had a few comments that we need to make some updated um changes to the code of conduct 
in respect to how members are elected because I don't think it has like the current one captures that in detail so we'll discuss also like making it reflect in the code of conduct and um, another thing that we also came up with was to also include um, so a question that came up was if someone is within the chaos community, right, but use their private social media accounts, so let's say make a post and someone finds it offensive and decides to screenshot that post and bring it to the chaos community, um, does our code of conduct become effective in that scenario? And so we thought it would be something to um reflect or like explain more extensively in the code of conduct in respect to that and so basically we have two changes we want to propose for the code of conduct mm -hmm. the update on electing new members and also the social media um, topic as well So I'm not sure if we can have that conversation right now or we hold on until the next meeting. I, I'm going to recommend until the next meeting just because we are um, out of time today. And I'm not actually sure like what the board role is, like the governing board has to do something, right? Like would they have to approve the changes or I'm not really sure what the process is. Or would we make them here in this community call and then propose them to the board for approval? Is that? Yeah, this is one of the things that I think we've set aside to be able to act on without going through the board, but we should check. Okay. So from a code of conduct committee perspective, we want to involve the community before making changes. Yes. That's why we are bringing this to this call okay. so we can have a conversation about the changes before we make them. Okay, so would it be okay if we moved this to like the very first thing next week? Is that is that going to be okay? Yeah, I think that would work. Okay, we'll we'll put this number one. Okay. Um, and then in the meantime, do we want to? Um, do you does the code of conduct committee have? this already uh, expressed in words so that we can look at what you're proposing or I think that might be easier than like all of us just trying to start from a blank document or you know like a blank paragraph right okay um I think we'll discuss this and share it before next week okay does that does that work for everybody is that okay okay cool um yeah we are out of time thank you for bringing that up and then next week we will i mean that, that also kind of gives us a chance to think about it a little bit how we feel um because that's a little bit complicated the, the public private stuff i guess so yeah so thank you code of conduct team appreciate you very much uh anything final before we head out we're a little bit over time sorry co uh chaos con committee i don't know if we had anything but whoop we don't have any time now <laughs> So we'll do an async. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.